Hello, and thank you for joining us for a very special preview of Dating Kinky's More Than Yes or No, coming up on September 12th and 13th of 2020. It's a free online event where we're talking about consent, boundaries, negotiation, and communication. So today's topic is consent for regular dudes with Hi There Catsuit. Catsuit, I'm going to hand it over to you. Well, thank you very much, Nuki. I always appreciate joining you. Uh, am I a regular dude? Uh, maybe, but uh, one thing I do know is I have 57 years of life where I've seen uh, the dating world go from the simple courting of the 60s and 70s with my parents to the uh, 80s and 90s when we were all just hip and going to discos and now we've evolved into things that are just totally new to me and to a lot of folks. One of the things that I was very interested in is the fact that I have so many friends that are always talking to me about, gosh, this guy is approaching me in the wrong way. And I started becoming fascinated with all the different ways that people shouldn't approach other people. So I've become fascinated in it to the point where I'm kind of studying it a little bit. And that's why Nookie and I are talking about this, because I've been in the scene for uh, quite a bit of time now, and I've been seeing the things that happen on FET sites. I see things that happen on regular dating sites, and I hear a lot of horror stories. So we're going to talk about some of the good things today. Nookie? And real quick, before you pass this back to me, you're also, uh, you're not just researching this, but you're also essentially about to put out a podcast all about approaching people and coming to people where they are, essentially what they want, which really mm -hmm. ties in with consent. I'm looking forward to starting that podcast in October in association with Dating Kinky, of course. It's called What Women and Other Wonderful Humans Want. And it'll be a weekly podcast where I speak to women and other wonderful humans about how people approach them, the do's, the don'ts, the horror stories, the good stories, and also trying to learn a little bit about them as well so they can have a little introspection as to why people might approach them in the way they do. I'm not looking for a date, but I want to help other people who are, especially guys who want to know the right way to approach women and other wonderful humans. Yeah, see, I think that's just brilliant. So hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nookie Notes, uh, or you could just call me Nookie, and I am the founder of Dating Kinky. And uh, my pronouns are she and hers. And I have been passionate about love, sex, romance, dating, consent, and how to get it all right for well over a decade now. And uh, more than yes or no is just one example of what we're trying to accomplish with Dating Kinky through connections, by actually connecting people through our dating site, and education helping those people who connect make the most of their connections uh, through learning about kink, relationships, communication, and more. And I'm super excited to be talking about uh, consent for regular dudes today because I think that, and understand for me, and I, I don't know about you, Katsu, but for me, I'm, I'm thinking of this as like dudes in the Californian sense, you know, from what I understand, <laughs> Californians call their toasters dudes. So if you're a regular dude, you can be, you know, pretty much any gender and still have questions about like, why is this all so confusing? And that's what makes me really excited about this today. And the reason I love that you called it dudes is a lot of the things that I hear from other people make me just want to go, dude, <laughs> so it's so perfect for this. So let's jump in, shall we? Absolutely. So it all starts with respect to treat others as you want to be treated. Okay, that's our show. Good night, everybody. No, seriously, it's that simple. But Nookie, you brought up a wonderful point that it's not only just treating people with respect, it's treating people the way you might treat somebody else. In yeah. the case of women, like your grandmother or your sister. And it's it's also the idea that, like, because we're coming from a not particularly 
average environment and not vanilla environment, one that includes alternative relationship styles and kink and sexuality, how you might want to be treated in the ideal situation might include a lot of lack of respect, right? Like it might include, you know, maybe some hum humiliation or degradation or a lot of sexy things that are not necessarily what other people want in the stage that they're at with you, right? Mm -hmm. So my thought is in whatever situation you're in, if you can imagine somebody that you care about, your, your mother, your sister, your little brother, your niece, your nephew, um, all adults, but if you can imagine them being in the same situation on the other end of your remarks, mm -hmm. And how would they react to that? Like I, I told you about um, a gentleman who approached me and he was all about like, you know, hey, I'd really like you to, I'd like to submit to you and I'd like to show up at your house and, you know, get naked on your front doorstep and you have, you keep me waiting out there and um, then you decide to let me in after a few minutes of, you know, cars going by and I said to this person, I said, let me ask you something. If your mother was on this kinky site and a complete stranger offered this to her, would you want her to accept? And this doesn't always happen, but that time it actually made the point. The person said, oh shit, no. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want my mother inviting a complete naked stranger into her home and i'm like yeah or your daughter or your sister or you know your your little brother mm -hmm. i mean think about these things so if we can not just put ourselves into the situation of what do we want because what we want is often that lizard brain it's like mm -hmm. i want all the things now um but what is reasonable to engage with with another human at this stage of our progression. You know, you wouldn't walk up to somebody in a coffee shop and say, hi there, I quite like the way you look. Would you like to diddle my bum hole? <laughs> um, I love yeah. that, by the way. <laughs> and this yeah, is the expression, I actually. Get, <laughs> well, you know, this is exactly the same type of thing that I get on a regular basis. People are like, oh, hey, I looked over your profile and you're really hot. Would you like to peg me? <laughs> no. Hi, my name is Nookie. What's your name? Hey. <laughs> that's the one I love. Hey. And that's the hey. entire note. <laughs> you don't know w how many. What you doing? Yeah, what was she doing? <laughs> it, but communication is absolute key for all of this. And there's there's fear and confusion when it comes to communication. I mean, it's important because our relationships have changed. We've gone from a world where you text and you message instead of talk. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I talk about the fact that I've had 57 years and I could never imagine texting and messaging when I was in my 20s and 30s. I mean, the first thing I ever had was Prodigy, which uh, was even before America Online and tied right there with CompuServe. And yeah. yes, you could send messages, but that was kind of the start of it. People talked on the phone. People talked to each other in person. And we have lost so much of that. And the ability to text and message has opened up this almost anonymous uh, empowerment that allows you to say things you would never consider saying to a person face to face. We get so used to that form of communication and the fact that we mm -hmm. can literally connect with people, thousands of people online at any single moment, that it's almost like for some people, the names on the screen stop representing actual human beings mm -hmm. to them, but instead represent hopes and ideations and fantasies for fetish dispensing mm -hmm. or love, 
even or, you know, human connection in a very specific way that our head is like, this is how I want this to happen type of things. Um for instance, uh, for instance, my name, hi there, Katsu. Mm -hmm. It is a character of sorts because it is the mindset that I have. It's a name tag, first of all, and it's a complete sentence, which I love. But the fact is, it is a character that I get into when I want to be in the scene. Yeah. Am I Catsuit 24-7? No. Are there parts of Catsuit in the person that is me? Yes, very much so. But the fact is especially on FET, and I think that's where a lot of the egregious things happen. And it'll happen on, on uh, Bumble and Twitter and OkCupid okay as well. But when you're talking to somebody, you're talking to somebody who is looking to escape from their average everyday person, at least they're on FET. When you're on when you're on one of the regular dating sites, they're looking for somebody that they can connect with. It's never about you. It's never about the person sending the message. It's about what the person receiving the message wants. Right. And everybody, everybody's always talking about, well, yes means yes. No, yes does not mean yes all the time. There's a difference between yes and no. That should be pretty easy. But right. the difference between yes and yes, or yes and yes, is the yes would be given freely. It would be given enthusiastically. It would be given by a person going, yes, I really want to hear this, or I want to experience this. And so many people just are looking for the yes instead of the yes. And I can only do that with a facial expression. Could I do that over a text? Maybe with an emoji but you don't see my eyes, you don't see my face, you don't see the expression that I can give back to you that tells you, yes, or yeah, or yes. Lots of difference there, Nookie. I, I think I think you're right. And I, I, I do believe that, you know, we've come a long way in expressing ourselves through text. I mean, I use, you know, smiles and nods mm -hmm. and you know, triple exclamation marks and, you know, emojis and so on and so forth. Um, but I think that what we do via text oftentimes doesn't translate or online doesn't translate as well to in person. Mm -hmm. And so we might be really good at one realm, but not the other right right we might be absolutely excellent at cybering i don't know if that's mm -hmm. even thing anymore but um <laughs> i remember that back in the that, day that, that actually happened on aol <laughs> yeah yeah and literatica and so many other places um even well even back in the day at compu and prodigy but um being really good at that where a lot of people sort of let inhibitions go and do things that they wouldn't normally do in real life or um, meet space because it doesn't have the same potential for damage as real stuff does. And so translating from that online, you know, fantasy laden um, atmosphere to real, Mm -hmm. space with real humans and people interacting with, uh, you know, facial expressions and body language and so on and so forth can be very different. And then going, mm -hmm. of course, from the real space, which is where I originally started out to yeah. online is also a very different experience as well. So I think it's important to understand that they have in some ways very similar rules for consent and in other mm -hmm. ways incredibly different. The answer yes may change as well. I mean, it's the an enthusiastic yes can always change. You can always move towards a no. Sure. It's and and that seems like common sense as well. But the fact is, you know, it's 
if you're talking about a scene, it's rarely a good thing for a top to accept a change in negotiations asking for more because you don't know what state the bottom might be in at that time. They might be in a subspace type thing. If somebody in in even a tech situation, if you happen to catch somebody while they're drunk and they don't have the ability to be of sound mind to respond to you, yeah, you might get some enthusiastic yeses that weren't really meant for that. And how many people have drunk text? Now, seriously, you have. Um, I just got one the other day. <laughs> Somebody is like, a friend of mine and I are going to be in Tennessee. I haven't seen you for a long time. Should I stop by on Friday? And then the next day he was like, um, sorry, that's unreasonable. And I'm like, yeah, you're only like nine hours away. Stopping yeah. by on Friday might be a little unrealistic. <laughs> And let's always remember that no harm can ever be done from doing nothing. Now, I, I, I will backtrack a little bit on that and saying <laughs> if you ignore people, yeah, that's bad. But sure. I'm talking about as far as action is concerned. Because if you, if you are in a situation where um, somebody wants you to do something and you've said yes to it before, and then you decide you don't want to, not doing it will not hurt anybody. Doing it is going to hurt somebody, quite possibly. So that's always that's always so important to remember. And will you feel good about it in the morning? <laughs> that's, that's always a, a great barometer or even more immediate. If you leave a scene and go back to the restroom and look in the mirror, how are you going to feel about yourself? And so, and, and I think that this is going to go both ways. If a guy truly is looking into his heart instead of his head, is he going to be able to go back and look in the mirror and say, yeah, I felt good about doing that? Or is uh, the person who's receiving it going to be able to go back and go, yeah, that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that. I mean, it's, we think with this, we should be thinking with this, a lot of guys think with oh, that, and that's where the problems come in. <laughs> well, I think one of the challenges is, well, actually, I think there's two challenges. The first is very few people um, have really thought about what are their limits? Mm -hmm. um, what are the boundaries that they would, you know, put into play if they were given, you know, time to really stop and, and pay attention to it? Um, and then the other thing is, is that a lot of times people will go into something and say, oh, OK, well, you know, I'm going to say yes to this because I will get X, Y, Z out of it, mm -hmm. whatever X, Y, Z is. It might be they might like me more or um, if, if I play with them now, maybe we'll have a relationship or whatever it is. Um, and for me, uh, living a life of no regrets means that you do something because you want to do it. So you're giving mm -hmm. yourself an enthusiastic yes. Right. Um, versus, well, I want to do this if it turns out exactly this way, which mm -hmm. that's a great way to live a life full of regret, regrets. Like, you know, okay, I'm going to loan you $5 as long as, you know, you are, you feel indebted to me for, you know, the next three weeks and, and you pay me back within X period of time. Right. That's a great way to learn to regret loaning somebody five dollars. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with any sort of kink or sexuality or relationship thing is if you think, well, I don't really want to do this. I don't really like doing this, but I'll do it because then they'll realize, you know, how much I'm willing to give up for this relationship and they'll stay with me or, you know, whatever the reason. If you can't do it without that reasoning that. Mm -hmm unnamed expectation coming through, then don't do it because mm -hmm. otherwise you're going to regret it. Like if you, everything that I've done up to date uh, for and with my partner has been a choice that I've made. If I make a choice right now and he breaks up with me five minutes from now, no regrets means I made that choice based on what we have shared so far, not what I expect to get out of it in the future. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's an, an important thing to consider. I mean, it may not work for everybody. 
to do that with every single you know thought process or whatever but if you pause to think about that and you think about well if i'm on the fence about this do i have potential of regretting it if the answer is yes then that's the time to to pause and say okay do i really want to take this chance mm -hmm. And when you when you take this to a scene, let's move away from dating a little bit, but when you take it to a scene, mm -hmm. just because you've said yes before, and I always go back to the consent and tea video, which is still the best. If if you don't want to if you don't want to spend a lot of time wondering what consent is, consent and tea, just look it up on YouTube. It's perfect. My queen, Lady Catalyst, always talks about the fact that because you said yes to me before doesn't mean that you're saying yes to me now in every single scene. And she says, you're going to get sick and tired of hearing it, but here is my rule. I'm going to go through everything if I play for you for one day or for seven days in a row. And it's because you need to make sure that those boundaries are clear. You need to make sure that those boundaries are are absolutely set so you understand it and you can relax and know that you're going to have a great time. Isn't that absolutely. what it's all about? Absolutely. I mean, even now, um, I, I, I enjoy a behavior modification with my pet. And um, I have a, a story that I tell about how he first gave me uh, consent. And it was not the ideal, but I took it and told him I was going to run with it. And um, even now we're seven years into our relationship and I still sometimes, at probably once every six months now, it used to be every two or three months, stop and ask him, you know, do you still consent to what we do? Do you still mm -hmm. consent to around in your head? Um, you know, is there anything that you wish we did more of or less of right now? Is there mm -hmm. anything that's changed in how you feel about me or our or our relationship um, because I find that re getting renewing that consent mm -hmm. is beautiful mm -hmm. but really really freaking beautiful and somebody just sent you a message saying that yes they enthusiastically yes. consent see that's yes. what that was <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, uh, uh, that's very enthusiastic again. Uh, let's talk about enthusiasm. As I mentioned, it's about talking from the heart instead of the head because mm -hmm. the uh, your does not think for you. And that can be for men or women. That should not be what's thinking. And if you don't know what I'm pointing to, well, that might be part of the problem. And I uh, have you- The goody what, bit. The, the goody your bits, goody thank you. not where your brain is. I call it- uh, <laughs> This is this is how I think of it because I love the Spice Girls. It's the Spice Girls rule of consent. Uh -huh. Tell them what you want, what you really, really want, if you want to be their lover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty simple there. Uh, but consent really means that you have talked about it. I mean, you can do anything that's a sign that you've agreed to consent but you have to talk about it to make sure that it's clear. And that goes back mm -hmm. to communication is key because you may think someone has a really nice ass, but assumptions are really ugly. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I was actually just on a conversation on Facebook today mm -hmm. where somebody said, ladies, you know, take some time and ask your man what's up because there might be something wrong and there's a reason some men cheat. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold up. I'm like, cheating? No, 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 no. Like if I'm being an asshole and some dude cheats on me, I'm to blame for being an asshole, but I'm not to blame for them breaking their word. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that is entirely their choice and vice versa. If somebody's being a jerk to me, it is up to me to walk away rather than 
breaking my promise of fidelity if I've given it, right? This is, this is, and I've actually had quite a bit of pushback saying that, no, 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 if, you know, a lot of men cheat because their women are not taking good care of them and by women saying this as well. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is, this is not a responsibility of any gender to manage the emotions of another gender. If you have an issue, you need to speak about it. Mm -hmm. If something is going well, you need to speak about it. If something is not going well, you also need to speak about it. That is no, that is no excuse for then you doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. as, as they say, two wrongs don't make a right. Um, I say that if you break your word, you, if you do something unethical, you can't put the blame for that on somebody else. Somebody else can't make you do something unethical. It is your choice to do it in response to their actions. Mm -hmm. So, and, and as, I, as I said in that conversation, I'm like, so if I get to the point in a relationship where I'm thinking about cheating, that relationship is already over. Because once I get to the point in a relationship where I'm willing to lie to somebody, so much has already gone down Mm -hmm. that why even bother staying in it? And I think that this is something important to understand because that's at its core consent, mm -hmm. right? I need to know if something that I'm doing is against your consent. I, so I can decide whether or not that's more important to me or your happiness and well-being is more mm -hmm. important to me. And that's where consent crosses over from like the kink and the physical and the sexual and the fun, sexy playtimes mm -hmm. into every single day. We have the opportunity to give and get consent from amazing others. Mm -hmm. um, and actually it, during the more than yesterday weekend, Meg John Barker is going to be talking about um, consent in relationships and building relationships on blocks of consent in order to create more powerful and strong functioning relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited about. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, if you think somebody's going to be cheating on you or is cheating on you, have the conversation before it has a chance to happen. If you're feeling bad about something, talk. I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with talking. Now, I will absolutely give many people the the point that sometimes it's hard to talk. Oh, yeah. I hate confrontation. Oh, I yeah. despise <laughs> confrontation. I take things personally, but instead of getting angry about it, I just get sad. And that leads to a lot of hurt. But if I had opened up my mouth and said how I feel mm -hmm. in the assertive voice, and assertive doesn't mean uh, angry or, or coming at you, it means telling what you feel, not using words like would, could, should, because the those words always throw guilt at it. If, if you hear, you know, I wish you would do something, that's as easy as saying, I wish you will do something, which you probably won't because I know you won't. So would you please do it? Uh, you know, you should have done that. Yes, you did that, but you really should have done so. You really uh, uh, didn't want to do it and all that. I mean, those words can hurt in themselves. Oh, sure. And I had to go back and actually learn to relearn uh, to teach my brain how to communicate in that way. Because if you're speaking from your perspective, and you keep it from your perspective by saying, I am hurt when this happens. As opposed to saying, you did this and that sucks. You see the difference there? One is talking about how you feel. The other one is accusing. So I realize that's not so much about consent, but it's also about the fact that if you communicate your feelings and don't make it about somebody else, make it about you, that communication can become so much clearer because the people who are receiving those words don't have to put a shield up to try to block everything that's coming from you. So that's, uh, that's a point I, I absolutely wanted to make when we talk about communication. 
it, another another one of our guests um, for more than yes or no, Enchantress Shane was on. Um, another one of our guests, uh, uh, Hardy Brooklyn's uh, mm-hmm. consent show this past month. And one of the things that she brought up that everybody seemed to really respond to was the idea of authenticity and being able to say to yourself or to others, right now I feel, R-N-I-F. Mm-hmm. Right now I feel sad because X, Y, Z. Right mm-hmm. now I feel frustrated that this is happening. Right now I, and allowing yourself to get in touch with um, where you're at mentally and emotionally so that you can be more authentic with others. Because if right now I feel this way and I tell you this, then that gives you the information you need to be able to move forward in an informed, consensual manner. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just, I, I go back to some of the ways that I used to, to speak. And I, I have to, and I'm, my head's going to get about this big, and it's going to say ego, ego, ego. But I do a lot of my talking through writing. As you know, that's what brought us together. And the words that you pick can make all the difference in the world. If they are telling a story that is, is confrontational or something that is more about what another person is doing rather than from your perspective, it comes off totally differently. I know that's common sense, but it's, it's true. It, um, it common, it's commonly said, but it's hard to catch yourself mm-hmm in the middle of these patterns of behaviors that we've learned often from our parents, our teachers, people in positions of authority over us, positions Mm -hmm. of power over us, where people will say, you made me. Mm -hmm. Whether you made me perform this act non-consensually, you made me feel this way non-consensually, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when it's used as a an emotionally manipulative tool, um, it seems very common to do that. Mm-hmm. And we've been taught to do that. We've been taught to say, you hurt my feelings versus I felt hurt when... Like, I mean, that's how common is that? You hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. You, you hurt my feelings versus I'm feeling hurt right now in response to this behavior. Mm -hmm. I I have a sign. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, it's just, it's a challenge, right? Because this is what we grew up with. Well, I have a sign that is actually on my bedside table, and I will take an image of it and put it right up here uh, because I'm, I, I don't have it memorized. But it really makes me understand that I am not responsible for other people's actions, reactions, or emotions. That's not my responsibility. I can, no. I can create a scenario that makes them feel that way, but my feelings are... Uh, their feelings are their own. My feelings are my own, and I am not responsible for that person's actions, reactions, or emotions or feelings. The challenge with that, though, is is that a lot of people will take that one step Mm -hmm. because it removes responsibility from our shoulders. Mm -hmm. That's freeing. They don't take the necessary, like, that's the right foot. They don't take the necessary left step of that means that I am 100% responsible for my own Mm -hmm. actions and feelings and how they might affect others, regardless of whether I'm responsible for how they Mm -hmm. react. And therein lies the issue. Like I can, I can call you a big Fat blotchy heffalump, right? Really? Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't even know what a big fat blotchy heffalump is, but <laughs> I can call you that. 
And I am, you are responsible for how you feel in response mm -hmm. to that. I am responsible for saying it to begin yes. with, for yes. the thoughtlessness that might have harmed you, for calling you something that I don't know if actually being a big, fat, splotchy heffalump is a good thing or a bad thing in heffalump. <laughs> Um, but I'll, have, I meant I'll have to search heffalump here. Somewhat of a negative connotation. No, mm -hmm. no offense to heffalumps. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, I would then also be responsible for the fact that in that moment, I was intending right. to hurt you, whether or not you were hurt. And, and that's the part, like people are very good at pushing other people's responsibilities out of their lives once they realize that's an option, but not as good at then taking the full responsibility of their own behaviors and actions mm -hmm. back. But Nunky, I'll, I'll give full disclosure here. That sign was made at a time when I was doing a lot of self-examination mm -hmm. and was taking responsibility for everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's a lot of everything. That. Absolutely. I mean, it's like I said, it's a necessary first step. If that mm -hmm. second step doesn't come right. at the same time in a little hop or soon thereafter, like if you look at it from the standpoint of, you know, one foot forward, one foot back in a stepping motion, mm -hmm. you're not done. Yeah. And you're not balanced. Right. And mm -hmm. that's the challenge that I'm, I'm pointing out is that when it comes to embodying consent, Understanding you're not responsible for other people saying the wrong thing, making the wrong decisions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is one half of an integrated whole. And the other half of that is you are therefore 100% responsible for the things that you do, the things that you say, the pressure you might accidentally um, mm -hmm. put upon somebody else, the um, mistakes that you make. Mm -hmm. in understanding um, and, you know, what you actually allow in your life as well. Yeah. And so I, I wanted to explain because I have uh, I've problem is I took the, the step you're talking about before I took the other one. Mm -hmm. And I was stuck in that 100% uh, in the other one where I was taking responsibility That's for right. everything. That's so a very I, people pleaser yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little like that. Uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about things that please people and things that annoy people, and let's go strictly to the virtual world, shall we? Uh, let's start with that. You know, being on a kinky or a, a sex site or anything or a dating site does not mean that they <laughs> want to get kinky with you or with anyone. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I so. Mean, one of the things that I like to talk about is that in this day and age, the fact that we don't have mutual consent um, built into most of our technology is frustrating to me. So, mm -hmm. for example, let's let's just say FetLife. And I'm not knocking FetLife. I've been on FetLife since the very first year. I think it's a brilliant space for humans of all sorts. It does have its flaws. One of the flaws, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is that at least once a week, once every other week, I get somebody introducing themselves to me with their avatar is a, them like spreading their butt cheeks and gaping their hole. And I have yet to figure out how to actually make any sort of real connection with somebody <sighs> gaping butthole. Um, <laughs> I never even thought of that side of things, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. <laughs> so, really, I mean, and it, it, the same thing is true of, of, I guess, dick pictures or, you know, mm -hmm. torso pictures or anything. Like, you know, everybody's going to have their preferences. I'm of the opinion, though, that when it comes to being on a, a site, I should be able to choose whether or not I see explicit photos. Mm hmm um, and I believe everybody should be able to choose whether they see explicit photos. So it's the same thing when it comes down to, you know, am I on a site? Am I on a site for right now? It says on, I'm on FetLife for events and friendships. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, people will approach me offering everything 
including, you know, make my gape hole, my butthole wide and gaping, you know, and this is, this is a key, right? Like is to understand that, you know, people are in these spaces for their own reasons. Mm -hmm. Not, they're not there for my reasons. They're not there for your reasons. They're there for their own reasons. I'm there for my reasons. And hopefully, um, and there's nothing wrong with any of those reasons. Let me, let me point mm -hmm. that out. Like if you're just on the site to get sex, great, more power to you. I am a fan of sex, right? Like I like getting sex too. And I do it sometimes. Um, but if I'm not on the site at that moment for sex, then what I call the Venn diagram of the sweet spot, you know, the, the circle of this is what I want. And the circle of this is what you want. Mm -hmm. We don't overlap on the sex bit, right? So there's nothing wrong with either of us. We're just not there for the same reason. Mm -hmm. And that's important to understand. So when approaching somebody on a site like that, it's usually ideal to approach them from a standpoint of, we don't know what they want. We don't know what they're here for, unless maybe we read their profile. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, there's an idea. <laughs> and we said, oh my goodness, I'm here for that same thing. Or I would love to know more about your professional hedgehog racing experience, mm -hmm. because I've always been interested in professional hedgehog racing. Um, but the, yeah, just because, you know, just because I, for example, am on a kink site, doesn't mean I'm on a kink site to fulfill your fantasies. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm on a dating site doesn't mean I, I am actually there for dating, but it doesn't mean I'm there for dating a dominant man or mm -hmm. I'm there for looking for a submissive man or um, a submissive woman for that matter or a slave or whatever. I might be there looking only for bulls for my cuck holding or I might be there looking only for play partners for fire play. Mm. So there's a lot of um, assumptions being made. It's, it's kind of like assuming there's that, that word again. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like assuming everybody in the grocery store is there for the same ingredients you are, which nobody would make that assumption. Right. So mm -hmm. why do that on a kinky or a dating site? Very true. Uh, th and you'll find, this possibly interesting that my entire idea of the what women and other wonderful humans want podcast came from the fact that I had written a journal entry or actually it was a note on FetLife uh, entitled uh, Dear Men about those unsolicited dick pics because I had heard so many stories from my friends talking mm -hmm. about the unsolicited dick pics that they get. Sure. And so I wrote about it and basically took a, a humorous look at saying, dudes, <laughs> don't do that. No, nobody wants to see them. And it's it's just, it's infuriating a lot of times. Well, let me tell you, I got a response from a guy in San Jose who was talking about the fact that he has a really massive one and women love to look at it. And that if I wanted to talk about this, that he challenged me to show mine so I could show that mine wasn't very impressive compared to his because he was sure that I had a small one. And my response to him was, first of all, you might want to go back and read the article because I admitted mine isn't impressive, but I have two kids, so something worked. <laughs> and second of all, <laughs> second of all, uh, and he said, you need to be better when you when you write these things and not assume that you're talking for everybody. And I said, well, I will be better uh, just like, uh, just like uh, people in writing a, a good profile. Because when I went to his profile, he had nothing on it. Oh, sure. Of course. <laughs> and it, I was loving the fact that the guy was getting infuriated about it. But then that's what really got me to thinking, what if there was a podcast that allowed men to hear what it is that genuinely works, genuinely allows people to feel connection 
And that's my idea for doing the podcast. And it's also for women to know, God, we're not alone. And they know they're not alone. But uh, I will tell you when I was in the when I was in the dating world back when I was uh, living up north, I would one question I would always ask because I was on Bumble and I was on Tinder, I would ask, tell me a horror story of the worst online date you've ever had. And that was always the most interesting part of the conversation. And it's sad because it's so true in this day and age. So I want to give people an opportunity to to do good things and and learn from others and and maybe get some sort of an idea that the perfect note to send somebody isn't hey or what you doing and pretending that somebody is there for the needs of the writer never that way I mean it's it's always about the person you're writing to, it's about their needs. If you can help them with their needs, that's great. If you're trying to invoke your needs on them, 99% it's not going to work. I think that that's, um, that brings us into a really interesting point because when you said, you know, the person that you're writing to, it's about their needs. So to me, it's kind of like you're going to somebody else's home. By, by sending a message, you're going to somebody else's home. You're intruding mm-hmm. upon their personal space. So you pretty much need to follow their personal rules. You mm-hmm. don't know their personal rules yet. That's why you revert to being pleasant and polite, mm-hmm. right? Um, and a lot of people, I think, misunderstand. They think, well... I'm on the internet. I'm doing the writing. You know, this is coming from me. This is, you know, what I get to say. Well, sure, you can say whatever you want. The results will end up speaking for themselves. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, when, know, like, and when writing profiles, oh yeah, that's when it's okay to talk about what you want. Yes. But it's also important to talk about what you have to give. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are the things that are good about me. Empathy, vulnerability, uh, kindness. Uh, I, I, I know there's this big debate about being nice and being kind. I'm, I tend to be both. I know some people say you be nice because you want something. No, that's not the case with me. I think the kindness part is, is the most important part there. Mm-hmm. But if you let people know... You know, when when you go to read somebody's uh, read somebody's message to you, what's the first thing that ninety nine percent of us do? Go to the profile to see what this person is like. So interestingly enough, I actually don't ever go to the profile. Really? Yeah, I even, I if, believe- you're, even if you're interested in what they said. No, I mean not not for at least quite some time. Okay, um, because. For me, so this person, let's 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 talk about how a message gets written. Mm-hmm. Um, and this this is something that's that's talked about quite a bit because a lot of people say, "Oh, I send out tons of messages and nobody ever responds to me." Okay, so let's talk about this. This person who is sending the message, they went through however many profiles, right? Looking at profiles, they went through, let's say, a hundred profiles, right? Mm-hmm. They looked at these 100 profiles and some of them weren't the right gender or some of them weren't the right um, location or weren't the right um, sexual orientation or kink role or whatever. But they chose five people to send messages to. Mm -hmm. These numbers are, are I'm completely pulling these out of my butt. So just bear with me on this. Five people. I'm one of those five people. Now, I open up my inbox in the morning and I have, let's say, 100 messages. Oh, geez. (laughs) Um, So do I then read every single one of those messages and go read every single one of those profiles just to find out if this person is interesting to me? No, I don't. I read through those messages. I answer them either, you know, let's continue the conversation then see what happens or an enthusiastic, hey, this was a great message or, you know, no, thank you. I wish you the best. You're going to need it because that was a terrible message. Um, 
But I feel that if I send a message to somebody, I can't rely on them going to my profile and seeing my relatively long and detailed profile, mm -hmm. my 500 photos, my over 1000 writings or whatever. What I can rely on is the words that I sent to speak for me. Right. Okay. And that's what they have to rely on for me. If their message intrigues me enough to continue the conversation, then we'll continue the conversation. And if long enough um, that continues, eventually I'll probably make it to their profile. Okay. But it's to me, it's kind of like um, I use online very, very much in the same way that I use real life. I go with whatever information is given to me immediately. Like I meet somebody in a bar, I don't immediately have, you know, their um, kinky vite, <laughs> right? Like I, I get to know them through conversation and interaction. If, if mm -hmm. they intrigue me enough to continue the conversation and interaction to get to know them. If we take a look at this video in 20 years, people might be laughing because I'm guessing that people will be able to wear glasses and just think oh, about, right. I want to see this guy's profile and it will pop up right behind them. And while you're talking to him, you can be reading them. And even then, like I would, I would probably not use it. Like, what's the point here? I might use it. Now, here's the funny thing. Now, yeah. so if some dude that I felt was a little shifty was like hitting on my bestie. Yeah, I might use the glasses to peek at their profile yeah. and be like, "Hmm, red flag." Red flag, right? yes. But for myself, I, I very often say I date people, not kinks. Mm -hmm. So the message that I get and the conversation that we have lets me get to know the human versus how the human thinks they ought to present themselves on a shelf of, you know, kinky potential for, you know, the next buyer to see. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, I also think that attention to detail in your profile, in the photos you choose, and in the posts that you make online is because if I start mm -hmm. getting a weird feel for somebody, if I start getting a very good feel for somebody, and I start going through that profile and all of those things, and then I see things that are like, oh, or wow, they didn't put any effort in at all. This is kind of weird. Or, hey, they're a real jerk to hundreds of people on the internet every day except me. <laughs> then, you know, that's, that's, that's absolutely going to make a difference in how I interact with them moving forward. Mm -hmm. We've talked a little bit about red flags. And I think that when it comes right down to it, you said that the biggest red flag is when people just don't care. And I think that when it comes down to it, most humans, and, and I might be an optimist in saying this, but most humans do care. The side of that that ends up being an issue, though, is that they are and it's very hard for some people to make themselves vulnerable and to try to connect with others um, and to open themselves to vulnerability by asking what other people care about in the case that they might find out that they don't care about them mm -hmm. or they don't want them. Like, so saying, do you want X, Y, Z? And X, Y, Z includes me and you might say no. Yep. So I, I care very much about what you want and about what you think, but I kind of push forward anyway, because I'm terrified of making myself vulnerable and asking about this thing, which if you turn down, then not only hurts me, mm -hmm. but also then gives you power over me. Yeah breaks, you know, breaks me in a way like it's so. And I'm not saying that this is an excuse. It is absolutely not an excuse to not do the things that are important. I am saying, though, that these are the types of things that is important, I think, for us to understand in that, A, we are not raised to consistently 
work towards consent. We're not raised in a consent-based society. Um, thus, right, because our habitual behaviors are what we fall back on when we're not thinking things through. And then the idea that asking for and gaining consent is actually a skill Mm-hmm. that we we have to we have to develop to overcome our own insecurities our own fears of inadequacy um our own um hurts and uh you know so on and so forth it makes it very difficult for especially for people who grew up in such a way as to be taught not only not about consent, but also possibly to have been taught or um, raised that their consent or their um, status Mm -hmm. meant more than anybody else's. I will give you, I'll give you a perfect example, Nookie. And this is talking about growing up. I am a serial hugger. Mm, Yes. I am an absolutely serial hugger. As a matter of fact, I've actually done a writing. It it wasn't on FAT or it wasn't on my blog because it was back in what I call real life called The Healing Power of Hugs. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a writing where I actually talked about how my hugs are translated. Uh, that there's the hug that says, thank you, I appreciate you. There's the hug that says, great seeing you. There's the hug that says, I don't want you to go because I really enjoy your company. And I know all those definitions in my head. The problem is that we are not living on the Starship Enterprise and we do not have a universal translator for those hugs. People do not understand what those hugs are and what their intent is. So therefore, those of us who are serial huggers are immediately guilty instead of innocent because people don't know our intentions. And I totally understand that. I don't have a problem with that. The thing is, I've had to learn, would you mind if I give you a hug? It's not that I've changed it all. It's that the person receiving it has been the the person that needs that consent. And that Mm -hmm. is important because some people have received hugs that didn't want that. Some people have received hugs that are very creepy and have been very inappropriate. I don't know that. Right. Those people know what they feel inside. So I can't assume that my universal translator will work because I don't go where boldly where no one has gone before. <laughs> as I and, start my William Shatner for no reason. <laughs> and as much as it might hurt to know that somebody didn't want one of our hugs, I offer the idea that Somebody who didn't want a hug was hugged anyway Mm -hmm. as a more hurtful thought Yep. to me, right? Like I don't, I don't want somebody who doesn't want a hug from me to get one from me. Mm -hmm. I want the people that engage with me in whatever to be enthusiastic about engaging in whatever, but also specifically in whatever with me Mm -hmm. and the idea that, you know, somebody might do some, here's an example. I was not always the outgoing young lady that you see before you. Um, for various reasons, I'm neuroatypical and it took me a while to, to be diagnosed and to um, learn about how to, to manage my, my um, mental differences than everybody else. And my, um, somebody that I once knew used to use that against me. Mm. And I was out one day and I had just gotten a brand new car. It was my first car. I paid full cash for it. First new car ever. I was super excited. It was convertible. I was, you know, I was over the moon and I was telling people about it and offering them rides and so on and so forth. And this person later said to me, you know, you really shouldn't show off so much. People don't like you when you do that. You know, they, they think that it's, it's really, it's bragging. Hmm. 
And because I'm neuroatypical, I have different responses to things than many people do. And my immediate thought was, well, if they didn't like me bragging, why didn't they either say something or just step away? Mm -hmm. We were in a bar. They could have just excused themselves and gone elsewhere. I still believe this is true, right? It's mm -hmm. still, it's still like I didn't want them to feel like they had to be miserable. Right. Listening to me talk about my new car um, any more than I wanted to talk about my new car and make them miserable. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's, there's two sides to it. And I think that that's an important factor of consent is that a lot of people, I think they break consent to get what they want. If that's the truth, then I suggest that maybe what you want is not being able to feel somebody's ass. What you want is for somebody, especially that somebody to want you to feel their ass. Mm -hmm. Right. And then to do it with joy. Exactly. Well, and, and I have learned throughout the years and especially of late, I will, I will reach out an arm and say, may I? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I am absolutely. Uh, but yeah, but I, uh, here, here's a really good example of the line between inappropriate and appropriate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hesitate to talk about it, but I will because I think it provides a very good example. My previous therapist would always give me a hug at the end of every session because they knew that that was my language mm -hmm. and wanted me to know that I felt safe. When I moved up North, the therapist that I had there heard me talk about this during the session. And she says, I will offer you a hearty handshake. Mm -hmm. And originally it made me feel like, wow, that was a little cold. Mm -hmm. That was, I don't know if she gets me. But the fact is, she ended up getting me a lot more than many therapists. Mm -hmm. But on our last session, which I knew was our last session because I was moving, I said, would you allow me to give you a hug as my way of saying thank you? And she enthusiastically accepted it. And she said, we'll talk to each other again. I said, I know we will, but I may not get a chance to do this. And it's my way of showing you with my whole heart that I thank you. Yeah. And she understood that. And it was a wonderful moment because I went from thinking she was really cold to when she accepted that. I think that she had seen the full circle with me that, yes, that truly was me. It wasn't just some talk. Mm -hmm. And so I like to share that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, and I think that that's beautiful. And and she could have also said, um, I would I would really love that because I think you're an amazing person. However, I'm not a hugger. I have touch sensitivities. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, and, that, and I would totally understand that. Right. And that's something that I think is important as well, you know, is that we don't want people to make themselves uncomfortable simply to cater to our feelings and needs and desires. Um, or at least I think most most humans don't. Mm -hmm. Although, again, we're raised to not really think of things that way and to think about, well, you know, if they really loved us, they will do things to make us happy. Mm -hmm. And, well, if we really love them, we want them to do things that make them happy. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to make us happy. So, again, I think it's just a little consent to me and the joy of consent is really just slightly changing how we look at the world and the people around us and coming at it, as you say, with respect is huge, but it's, it's as much a respect for ourselves and our space and how we would love consent to be a part of our lives, how we would love people to be able to approach us with our thoughts and needs in mind um, as much as it is respecting other people and the humanity that they represent. Mm -hmm. And I, I, we began this 
conversation talking about respect and we're ending it talking about respect. And I, I sa- said in my notes, it, it all ends with respect. And then I put and love too. But I will tell you that there's some there are some beings that just do not re- will never respect consent. Oh, sure. And and uh, I, I I leave you with with this term. Uh, I have had uh, a being that has absolutely spent much of my time since I've moved back uh, pouncing and kneading on my uh, nether regions, and my cat does not go with consent. <laughs> I could say, I didn't consent you to do that, <laughs> to you doing that. Owning Just never listen. Consent listens. To non-consent relationship. <laughs> no. yeah. and, and that's where people started hearing me go, I did not consent for you to do that. And uh, yeah. then people started going, what's all this consent stuff? So it happens to me <laughs> in an everyday life. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Nookie, I've absolutely enjoyed talking with you, and I look forward to uh, the more than yes or no coming up on the, uh, the during this great September weekend, the uh, 12th and 13th, is it? Yep. Yes, it is. 12th and 13th of September. 12th, yeah, 12th and 13th, and uh, if you're watching this afterwards, I hope you uh, enjoyed a little bit of what we had to say, and hope you will join me on my podcast beginning in October 2020. You can get all the details on datingkinky.com. It's called What Women and Other Wonderful Humans Want. And I hope you'll join me every week for that. We've got some great guests lined up to get us started. And we will have a lot more stories as we go on. And thanks, Nookie, for giving me the opportunity to talk to everybody today. Well, thank you for joining me. I think it's been wonderful. And for having me as well in your topic. I mean, this is... This is the type of thing that I don't think we can talk about enough. I don't think that we can go over it enough. And I think that getting different perspectives allows us, I think our consent pictures for ourselves are like patchwork quilts and they're built up of, you know, who we are as people, our experiences, and then ideas that we bring in from others. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what more than yes or no is about is the idea that, the more we can learn about how others choose consent in their lives, the more that we can choose or not choose um, how we want to integrate consent into different parts of our lives and with the people that you know we love and that we want to be happy with us. Mm-hmm. So, um, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, again, join us on September 12th and 13th, two free online days of talks about consent with um, amazing speakers from all over the world and um, more than yes or no.com. It's been great having you.